Hello, and thank you for joining this presentation on breast reconstruction using your own tissue. I'm Dr. Katherine Isaac from the University of British Columbia. I will take you through this 10-minute presentation outlining the goals of reconstruction and some definitions to help you understand if and how to choose the best tissue-based option for you. We will review options from the back, abdomen, buttock, and thigh. The goals of reconstruction are to recreate a breast after your mastectomy without interfering with your current or future cancer treatments and providing you with a long-lasting result with minimized risks and maximized resemblance of your desired breast. Using your own tissue can help you achieve these goals. Using your own tissue means using a flap, which allows the surgical transfer or transplantation of skin and fat with or without muscle from one part of the body to another. The flap is transferred with its blood vessels to supply nutrients to the tissue. The flap is called pedicled when the tissue and its blood supply remain connected to the body and are transferred to the chest. These pedicle flaps are shorter surgeries as compared to their more complex counterpart. The free flap, where the tissue and blood vessels are disconnected from the body transplanted, and reconnected in the chest. Free flap surgeries are the longest of the reconstructive options. Using your own tissue to build the breast is advantageous because the reconstructed breast feels like your own tissue. The breast will age with you and shrinks and grows as your weight changes. It is the reconfiguration of your body where tissue from one place is used to recreate another, and once it heals, it provides a long-lasting result. It succeeds in recreating the breast without any foreign material or implants. And importantly, your own tissue withstands the effects of radiation better than the alternative of using implants for a reconstruction. However, these options are technically more demanding and invasive, meaning the surgery is longer than surgery using implants. Also, the recovery is greater, particularly because there are two areas of the body that have to heal. Overall, using your own tissue has risks related to the increased length of surgery and has additional risks according to the area that we take the tissue from. A flap may be the best option for you if you have had radiation in the past, if you prefer to use your own tissue, or you have had a failed reconstruction with implants. To undergo a flap surgery, your surgeon will discuss with you your baseline health and your ability to undergo a long surgery. They will review the anticipated recovery and the general and specific risks of each flap option. The choice of flap depends on you. Specifically, it depends on your body and where you carry any excess skin and fat for transfer. It also depends on your current and desired breast size and whether you would accept an implant to augment the volume of tissue you have. It also depends on important hobbies and your profession, as some flaps may affect your strength or your ability to do certain activities temporarily or permanently. Let's review the most common areas of the body where tissue is used to recreate the breast. The four regions are your abdomen, your back, your buttock, and your thigh. The abdomen is the most common area of the body where tissue is transferred from because the majority of women carry extra tissue in this area and the resulting scar can improve the contour of the abdomen. The tram flap stands for the transverse rectus abdominis myocutaneous flap, which means that the skin, fat, and part of your rectus muscle is transferred to your chest to recreate the breast. For a tram flap, the tissue used is from just above your belly button to above your pubic bone. A tram flap is most often transferred to the breast as a pedicle flap, which shortens the length of the surgery. An alternative option from the abdomen is the Dieppe flap, which stands for the Deep Inferior Epigastric Artery Perforator flap. 
The DM flap uses the same skin and fat as the tram, but does not take the rectus muscle. Instead, the blood vessel is traced through the muscle, and it is disconnected from the body, transplanted to the chest, and reconnected, which makes for longer surgery. The tram or DM flap may best be suited to you if you carry extra skin and fat on your belly and if it's sufficient to match your desired breast size. These flap options may not be best for you if you already have weakness in your abdominal wall due to multiple abdominal surgeries or you have existing hernias. The choice between the tram and the DEP depends on a number of factors. But importantly, what distinguishes them is the length of surgery, with the DEP requiring almost double the surgical time as the tram flap. But the risk of a hernia or bulge of the abdomen with a tram flap is over double the risk of what it is with a DEP flap. From the back, the most common flap is the latissimus dorsi flap, where the latissimus muscle is taken with overlying skin and fat to recreate the breast. Based on your anatomy, sometimes the muscle can be partially or completely spared, and this is called a Tdap flap. Some women carry excess skin and fat on their back, making this potentially a favorable place to take your tissue from. The skin and fat is taken and the resulting scar can be placed anywhere overlying the muscle. This pedicle flap is then transferred to the front of the chest with its blood supply. The latissimus flap may be right for you if you don't have very much tissue in your abdomen. The latissimus flap is commonly combined with an implant or used to save a failed implant reconstruction. It can be a favorable choice because it is a shorter surgery as compared to the free DF flap and as compared to the other free flaps that we will review next. Because the muscle is often taken as part of the flap, this flap option may cause temporary weakness in activities that require arm extension and may affect your arm strength and fatigue when working overhead for prolonged periods of time. From the buttock, there are two gap flap options, which stand for gluteal artery perforator flap. This flap is named according to whether the tissue and blood vessel are taken from the superior upper portion of the buttock or from the inferior lower portion of the buttock. This flap may be favorable for you if you don't have excess tissue on the abdomen and instead you carry extra tissue in the gluteal region. This is most commonly performed for women who are slender with minimal tissue elsewhere and who desire a smaller breast with no addition of an implant. Gap flaps do not take any muscle and therefore do not affect your activities. However, it is a free transplantation of tissue and therefore a longer surgery. Furthermore, the recovery requires careful positioning and some women may be unsatisfied with the resulting contour of the buttock after the tissue has been removed. Lastly, the thigh tissue can be used as a tug flap or transverse upper gracilis flap where the inner thigh skin, fat, and gracilis muscle are harvested. The tug flap is similarly more often used in slender women with the desire for smaller breasts. Since the tissue used is near the groin, the recovery can be more demanding with maintained hygiene, and there are similarly risks of difficulty healing and dissatisfaction with the scar and resulting contour. I hope this 10 minute review of flap options has helped to inform you for your future discussion with your surgeon. When thinking of the options, it is important to consider your baseline health, your ability to undergo a longer recovery, and to accept the potential risks of these types of surgeries. I hope this has helped to explain to you how your body habitus, your desired breast size, and the physical demands you have of your own body will influence which flap option may be best for you. Importantly, your preference to avoid or use implants in combination with your own tissue will impact which flap is optimal. Thank you for your attention.